And I, I'd like to invite uh, Antoine Arnaud to join us now. Um, as that video earlier showed you, um, the, the, one of the results of the conversation that we had uh, here last year was a models charter that was a collaboration um, spearheaded by James and signed by both Caring and LVMH. And we just thought it was worth going into a little bit more depth on it to understand a little bit about how it happened. And um, you know, Antoine, in the video, one of the things that we, we pulled out was that Instagram comment that you left on the post that James created that spread all around the world. Um, can, you, can you talk about what happened? Like, so when you saw that post, what happened after that? And kind of what, what were the kind of, what were the personal and professional reactions that you had when you, when you saw that story go live? So, um, first of all, <coughs> to start with, um, it was a very <coughs> naive and a little bit candid thing to do. Honestly, I was in my car going back home. I see this happening on Instagram. I, I knew obviously things like this were happening um, in different brands, probably even in ours. And I think, in a way, my uh, candid message, I think it was, uh, if something like this happens in our, in our brands, please give me a call, was um, a way to ask you to call us. Um, we've always, always tried to do things uh, in an ethical and a responsible way. By asking James to speak to us and to start thinking about how to make things better, um, I think maybe subconsciously I, I was just trying to prepare the grounds for what was about to happen. And uh, three days later you were in my office um, telling me what I didn't know or, or wanted or didn't want to see. And that's um, that things like this were happening every single day at every single show, almost at, on every single shoot. Because we speak a lot about fashion models and uh, about fashion shows, but shootings like this happen every day. We have uh, 60 brands, uh, uh, the industry is huge, and uh, it's not only about fashion shows, it's about you know, brochure shootings, castings. Um, so every day something was happening that we needed to try to resolve. And after that it went quite quickly, honestly. Um, we started working on, on a, a few rules that we would set for ourselves. We learned that our friends at, at uh, Caring were doing the same thing. And very quickly, we, we merged the discussions to make it uh, joint. Obviously, we thought the power of, of announcing something together with uh, the other biggest actor of the industry was uh, huge and would be much more powerful. Uh, I take this opportunity to uh, once again, call all the other actors of the industry to join this charter. A few have joined already. We'll announce them a little bit later this year. Um, it's, it's welcome to all the other brands, how, however competitive they are with us. On these subjects, we need, we need to join forces and to make things clear. You know, it's a very fragmented industry. When you work with a model, we don't pay the model. As you know, we pay the agents, and then there's often other middle people who take commissions. So the level of responsibility that we have is one only. We have the wallet. But as you know, the world functions today, this wallet is very important for all these actors of the industry. So controlling this, we can show our muscles and we can make things change. I feel that already things have changed. Maybe not to the extent that we want, but it's going in the right direction. And, um, and from now on, you know, it's only work in progress. Let's, uh, let's make it move even more. Yeah, and to further um, that, uh, that day, just because we were all sort of joking about it, um, uh, <laughs> it's been fixed. But the, the uh, internet uh, at Stella McCartney is so bad that in order for me to communicate, I would actually have to leave the building and go down the street and like, send texts and, uh, and emails. And uh, so the day that happened, I was actually so upset that I went and made that post. And then I just went back in the building. And uh, two hours later, the uh, PR director, Stella McCartney, came down and said, uh, Francois Pino would like to see you in his office right now. And I was just like, I thought I was getting fired. I don't know what I did. So I was like, what's the matter? And he's like, 
do you realize what happened? I was like, no, I don't realize what happened. What happened? He's like, your post went viral. I was like, well, how would I know? Because I can't communicate near as to what's happening. <laughs> so, so they said, you know, we want you to meet uh, Marie Claire Devo and Valerie Duport. So um, I was immediately whisked to uh, to the office. And as this was all happening, again, I, you know, I didn't have my phone. I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on outside. And uh, so we went there. And uh, basically, uh, uh, later on, uh, when I met him, uh, Francois said, um, uh, I just want you to know that um, while I'm devastated at what has happened, I'm very happy you took seven brands down at once and you should realize your power and use that well. And I, it didn't really dawn on me because this was all happening so fast that um, when I sat down with them, they basically were like, what do you want? What can we do? And you know, my initial goal when I spoke last season was to eventually get in front of both of you. And I thought that was going to be a two or three year process. And this just jump started everything in 10 minutes. And um, so by the time I'd met with them, they're, you know, separately they both said, we're willing to sit in a room with each other and make this happen because now we realize the devastation this is causing. We have to do something about it now and make people responsible for their actions. So um, uh, when, uh, after I'd met them, uh, that night I went back to my room and that was the day I got 1,300 letters and messages and emails and it, the whole thing started to overwhelm me because these, they're devastating and they're, I just couldn't wrap my head around all of this and everyone wanted me to weigh in on what can we do, how can we do this and um, somewhere in that, you know, the text trail was his text and uh, everyone said, God, did you see Antoine Arnaud reach out to you on, and I was like, is it moments where? And I was just like, Really? Like, I was, there were so many that I was overwhelmed, I didn't even know he reached out to me. So I'm trying to scroll through my things and I didn't see it. So I just, I reached out to him because I thought, am I, am I being punked? Is this like a fake Antoine or no? So I actually, like, I reached out to him. I was like, is this really you? Like, do you? He's like, yes, I would like to meet you. And we arranged to come to his office. And the, between those two meetings, after that, everyone came together between carrying an LVMH and they decided to sit in a room and start this, start this process. And again, I thought this process would be so much longer and it would take several months and initially this wasn't even going to be announced till next year but really when everyone really appreciated the seriousness of getting this out fast I was really shocked before I left for vacation when uh, Marie Claire told me she called and said we are at Maria Claire and Valerie that we are we're launching this now before the so show James let me just interrupt there for a second mm. because I, I, I really want to underscore one point um, that you know, Julie mentioned earlier, um, but across all of the salons yesterday evening, one of the key themes that came out was this idea of collaboration, right? So if we're going to solve big industry issues, you can't do it in, in isolation. And what I think is so remarkable about um, the charter that's been created and the work that's been done is that, you know, I can't recall a time that I've seen an, a joint press release issued by Caring and LVMH. Was the first. I don't think it's ever happened before. And in order for us to really drive action in our industry, we need to get over this idea that we're competing with each other on everything. We are working. You know, there's all of these camps and fiefdoms. There's LVMH and Caring. There's Condé Nast and Hearst. You know, th there's the British Fashion Council and the CFDA and the you know the the French Institute. And the, we are in this together, right? And so um, I just really want to commend Caring and LVMH for taking this the first step. I I hope it's the first of many steps that we'll take, not just on the models charter but also on the other issues that our industry is facing and the other opportunities that we have to, uh, to work and collaborate together. So, so just before we move on to our sessions for the day, um, I wanted to, to ask a little bit more about the charter. And you, know, you both said maybe it's not perfect. What are the things that we still need to get right to get it better, do you think, Antoine? Listen, we started with um, different uh, themes of course, health was one of the big themes. Working conditions was, a, was another one. On these themes, I feel that we've been um, probably far enough on working conditions. On health, it's so subjective. And by the way, I just want to add one thing that I feel was probably not understood correctly in this charter. Um, it's not a charter against ultra-thinness. Um, some people are ultra-thin and very healthy. And I feel that it's been uh, put out there as 
know, Caring and LVMH are banning thin models. That's not what we're doing. We are um, banning very small sizes that make not ultra-thin models want to be ultra-thin, which is very different. Um, so the health of these girls and boys is very important to us. The size 32, I mean, I'm not an expert in sizes, but I'm told it's uh, extremely, <laughs> extremely uh, uh, small, and I think 34 is already uh, very acceptable for, for you know, regular models to, to fit in. Uh, when we say there are, uh, there's space for more and to get better, it's really an iterative process. We're going to already very soon meet with Caring, uh, with the Syndicat um, des Mannequins, with Models, with James and a few other people of the industry around a table and say, OK, this first uh, fashion week happened, what can be done better? We need feedback from the models. The problem, in my opinion, is that there's still, very si there's still a very silent community. Of course, some of them come out and, and speak when something really bad happens on social networks, uh, uh, you know, a, a horrible casting or a very bad experience. <coughs> but something struck me this time is that we had a, a psychologist hotline available 24-7 during the entire fashion week. Uh, fashion weeks, New York, Paris, Milan, I mean, the whole of them. Do you know how many calls we received? How many? Zero. And I will tell not you, one, call. one of the interesting things in this whole, uh, in, not investigation, but speaking with models, speaking with agents, um, uh, and I was actually this morning speaking with Marie Claire, um, the one thing, uh, obviously it's very difficult for people to speak out. I even think if you're on a phone, you have this feeling that everyone knows you're making the phone call. And, and one of the things we discovered, and it came out last night even in uh, uh, the salon about you know, a, uh, a, complaint, uh, a complaint line or a grievance line, uh, that maybe there's also the possibility that this generation of kids, they don't get on a phone. Uh, maybe an app, maybe an email. Like these are, we have yeah, to that's also what we're update. we're working on, by the way. Yeah. And that is, you know, that's the thing. Someone, that, you know, someone also suggested, I think it was Philip Picardi. Oh, I'm not supposed to attribute things. <laughs> anyway. It was, it was an idea that you could create like a rating system, you know, like, where, you know, like a glass door for, for the modeling industry, which I, you know, which I thought was a remarkable idea. I did also want to, to take some time very quickly to address questions from the audience. So if we could lift the, high, uh, the house lights up really quickly. Um, and Mary Claire, I think maybe, maybe if you had something to add, so Mary Claire Deva is uh, the, the representative from Caring that helped to drive the, the models charter as well. So go good morning, everyone. Yes, so first thing I would like to say is that we share really the point of view uh, expressed by uh, James Scully and uh, Antoine Arnaud. For us at uh, Caring and above all for François-Henri Pinault, it's a huge topic and we have been work on uh, the well-being of fashion model since a long time. But this year, we have the feeling that we need to formalize. So that's why to write uh, our principle and to do in the great way with uh, LVMH, it was really important for us. But we have the feeling, and we have this discussion also with uh, James, uh, Cyrine Brulé, that this is the first step, and we need to continue to push the boundaries. So, of course, as you said, it's important to have the brands and other brands that join us, but I think we have to go again beyond and to ask uh, media groups, uh, model agencies, but also casting director to take their responsibility and to join us. Because if we want to really change the spirit, to open the mind about this topic, it's really important to have all the actors and not only, I will say, the, the fashion group, because without the media groups, nothing will happen. So I think it's really to have an holistic approach with a different kind of people. And I think I, I would like to ask, we begin to listen more and more uh, fashion models, but I think we have to increase our way to listen them, because they're on the ground, and they are the best people for me to express what is happening. Because even as a brand, you do the best, you can't know uh, everything. So that's why I think also we have to call fashion models uh, to express. 
And my only, I will say, uh, thing that we like to add is the fact you are speaking about collaboration between groups. And as you said also, uh, we are involved a lot on the sustainability field. And I think you fully, uh, it's really the way to work. If you want to change a paradigm, if you want to change the industry, we have to work together and we have to share the best practices. Uh, I don't say to change the world, but at least uh, to change our uh, industry. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor Claire. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're already running a bit late, so I'm going to keep moving. But that's a call to action, right, for all of you in this room. This charter is only the first step. But if you are representing a big brand, a big retailer, a big media company, one of the fashion councils around the world, we are calling you to action to get on board with this charter. The two biggest groups in the industry have taken this brave, important step. I just want to ask who's going to be next. Right. Thank you both, uh, Antoine you. and James. One little thing to yeah. add. Speaking of action, um, we had a few model agencies that united and sent us their complaints to Marie-Claire and, uh, and ourselves. We will have no problem at all not to work with model agencies who don't respect this charter. However, however big they are in this industry, we will have, I mean, we need to respect it ourselves in order to make it happen. And we told them already, so at first they said, but it's inapplicable, you, you, you cannot make us do that, we're losing margin, it's impossible. If they don't comply, we will not work with them anymore. Great. Um, and I, I just wanted to finish by saying, um, uh, I was sort of inspired by all day yesterday, um, Imran, you saying to asking everyone, like, what is it that you would like people to come away from? Or what, you know, what is the message you would like to say? And uh, one of the things uh, I feel is that um, uh, when people ask me or people thank me, and pe it's, the whole thing is very overwhelming and hard for me to wrap myself around. And I feel like, um, this has kind of been an accidental journey and um, I feel like I've lived the last year outside myself. I have this, this whole thing has swirled around me and it's almost impossible for me sometimes to connect with me and what's happened. And um, obviously on social media, I have read a million reasons for people you know, questioning why I did what I did uh, from everything that I have a Mother Teresa complex to that um, my, you know, my, I'm finished as a casting director and I need the work. And um, one of the things I wanted to take away or that I would want people to take away, especially the people that I spoke about uh, last season or spoke to, is that, um, again, the, the, uh, the, uh, what your actions do to people and uh, I think the best way to sort of encapsulate uh, where I was coming from was uh, when Cameron, uh, and I'm not, I don't feel responsible for her doing what she did, but the fact that she spoke out and started this, my job should Cameron not. Russell. Cameron Russell, uh, that my job should not include abuse. Uh, I actually wrote her a thank you letter. And because I know at the time, like me, she was being inundated and overwhelmed. And uh, I sent her a thank you, which I don't even know if she got because I think at the time she was so overwhelmed, she'd stopped, she stopped answering things. But um, uh, just to sort of make it clear where I came from, because I, I believe in the last year and especially in the last few weeks, I actually discovered myself how this happened. And it's, uh, it will open a new door, but it's also a kind of form of closure for me. Um, so if you will be patient, it's a quick letter. but. Uh. <laughs> um. Showing your age, James. Oh my God. Uh, dear Cameron, I can't tell you how many times I've tried to sit down and write this, but I will ultimately collect myself, my thoughts, and against all my fears, I'll press the send button. A few days ago, when these accusations of Harvey Weinstein started to surface, a thing that happens very rarely to me these days, yet occasionally surfaces out of nowhere starts. The adrenaline rush, the mental and physical exhaustion at the same time, brain fog, pacing the room, starting and stopping tasks and forgetting that I even started them, and that growing immobilizing fear of knowing that a rabbit hole is about to open and my desperation to halt it before it takes me down into it. How can I possibly say in 2,200 characters, the Instagram limit, what's going on in my mind? I'm in awe of your bravery. 
You've finally opened a door that has never been allowed to open. You've let the women, men, boys and girls writing to you release something that they've been holding on to alone, and for many it's likely the first time they speak out about it. But you also helped me come to a realization. I cannot express to you how searingly painful it is for me to read these posts. I know what it's like to get these letters, and I will tell you they never stop coming. And the weight of it is crushing. I wanted so badly to skip your posts, not to read them, just press like and move on. But because of these posts, I've also had to reconfront my own, self, my own abuse. The question that hurts the most is why did it take so long? All of these people asking, aren't these actresses coming out 20 years later and every day there's a new one jumping the shark? The rational answer is, how can one person, even a group of people, stand against a producer, a director, a religious organization, photographer, or stylist who have a built-in wall of protection? That no matter what you say or do, there's someone who will look the other way. Tell to your face it didn't happen. That even though it's true, we'll make sure that no one believes you. That there's too many people who depend on these abusers to keep the business going, so your episode is just not worth enough to unsettle an entire industry. The non-rational answer is far more complicated than the one that I and many others have chosen, likely because it feels more comfortable for us. I'll never be able to explain why, till the day I die, that it would have been my personal, cho personal choice never to utter a word about my own experience to anyone. It was an offhanded comment by my brother during the Boston pedophile trials that finally broke me in half. Not only did I use my words as weapons, I threw them like machetes at my family until I had nothing left to slash them with. I will regret what that did to them, and especially my parents, for the rest of my life. That would be reason one of 10,000 why we don't speak, and we feel it's easier to live in silence. What I regret even more is the trajectory I let my life take as a way to deflect what happened to me from my own silence. While I've long forgiven the people who have abused me, what saddens me the most, and it's the crippling battle I fight almost often, is that most times it's impossible for me to forgive myself for my own self-abuse, the situations I allowed myself to become a part of, and the things I let people do to me because what was left of my self-esteem told me this is what I deserved. I'm a rational adult, and I know full well that what happened to me was not my fault. We all do, but try to convince us otherwise. And to those of you who abused us, to those of you who turned your heads in complicity to protect themselves, their friends, and employers, this is a mess you leave us with for the rest of our lives. I occasionally post a meme on an Instagram that says, I walk around like everything is fine, but deep inside my shoe, my sock is sliding off. Now you know what that really means. Fashion's a world that allowed me to escape my past and a chance to reinvent my old self, where I found a new chosen family full of acceptance and tolerance, or so I thought. As I watched what I thought I'd escaped creep into my own backyard, what you helped me realize is that even though many times it's impossible for me to speak and defend myself, I would never let what happened to me or my trajectory happen to another person in this business if I could stop it, and that's why I chose to speak out. You gave me renewed strength to keep fighting. These last few days, I've had to take a long, hard, painful look at myself yet again, making it clear where I need to go next. Then when the time and place is right, it will be my time to share my story. You've reminded me of my purpose within and, without this, and out of this business, and for that I eternally thank you. And I'm going to say the thing that people are afraid to say because it's coming. When the name of these offenders are revealed by the models who are finally no longer afraid to hold back, I hope I'm standing right there next to you. If there's anything I can do to help you on any level, you know I'm here for you without question. And I and finally, if you thought it was just these girls and boys you thought you were helping, I can tell you now, it's so much bigger than that, more than you could ever know. Thank you, James. <laughs>